relatively unknown figure today, Robert Noble Burgess, a charismatic entrepreneur, had a major impact on the Walnut Creek area. In addition to a large number of development projects in the Diablo Valley area, Burgess was responsible for donating Walnut Creek's first fire truck in 1926, a Model T Ford. In addition, Burgess personally funded a downtown sewage system and the city's first library. His grandson, Jim Moore, had this to say about his legacy. He was a, he was a, a fairly formidable figure. He, he wasn't, a, wasn't a cuddly grandfather. He was a grandfather who was preoccupied with his, his work and, and always moving forward, always pushing. 1909, he built the dam with the idea that he would create the lake. Uh, and then at some point thereafter, during the 20s, I, I think, um, began to undertake to develop and uh, subdivide and develop the lots here. The teens were over. World War I was over. He had declared bankruptcy, didn't, uh, which occurred at least once in his life, if not more. Didn't have too much left, except perhaps this home, by virtue of the fact that he had put it in Granny Ann's name. With his entrepreneurial ingenuity and his knowledge of um, how to get financing and how to promote things, he contracted with Hearst and he writes a section in his autobiography about that that is fascinating. He tells about how he contrived to get Hearst to come to visit, presumably here, to the homestead. Hearst brought a whole entourage. They went to Diablo. He describes in the book how he was able to essentially get Hearst off by himself and spend four hours with Hearst, both of them on horseback, riding around Diablo with one envisions RN pointing out all the possibilities and so forth, with the idea that Hearst would then promote it using his uh, ability to touch markets all over the country through the newspaper chain. RN would sell lots, put in sweat equity, develop the thing uh, as a builder here. He was a concerned citizen and one gets the impression in reading about him and reading of his, of his talents and of his motivations and the things that drove him that he was an astute giver. He gave because he knew that by giving he was going to get back. It was going to further constructive business interests and, cons and further the development of the area and indeed that's, that's what happened. I think for me, and it is a union of the two different sides of my family, with my grandfather, R.N., on one side, and my Uncle Jim on my dad's side, Great Uncle Jim, who was the governor of California. In 1931, he's, he came to Mount Diablo and dedicated it as a state park. 20 years earlier, for, for all of us to use, everybody. 20 years earlier, my grandfather, R.N., was developing it for private interest, building a road up there, thinking about I'm, we're told, building a hotel on the top and commercializing it. So two different approaches, not good, not bad, not right, not wrong, two different views. And um, RN was, a, was a, a great businessman, I think, a great and a very entrepreneurial person and an extremely hard working man. Um, it fell to another relative to conclude the actions of the legislature to adopt that land as a state park where now all of us can go and hike and walk up there and it's not a private preserve. That to me is what sticks in my mind as I think about, uh, I think about RN and, uh, and Mount Diablo.